Hello everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So today we are here building a large, somewhat large, family house in Plymouth Isle. I'm calling this New England Salt Box because it's based off of a New England Salt Box, which is a style of house. Um, it's a quite an old style of house, kind of like from, I believe, like the 1700s, 1600s. Um, and, you know, I... I haven't read that much about it, but I was like looking at one of these um, architecture books that I liked to look at when I was younger, and it was like Amer American architecture. And there was like, you know, a section about the salt box houses, like, oh, I'll build one of those. So I looked it up, and yes, yeah, from what I understand, they're kind of like main, there's like four main rooms on the first floor, usually the kitchens in the back, and like they're characterized by like the um, kind of back of the house being like just one sloping roof from like the second floor all the way down to the first floor. Um, so this is not like a, you know, pretty much like traditional <laughs> salt box house. There's like a lot of additions and stuff I added to make it bigger, but like the main base of the house is kind of based off of that style. So that's why it's called that. So anyway, um, yeah, this house ends up having five bedrooms and three bathrooms, uh, also has a garage, and I end up building it on lot number 63 in Plymouth Isle, so you can download the house. There'll be a link in the description below, um, and, you know, if you haven't uh, seen my Creative World series, um, you know, um, I have a whole playlist on my channel, and I'm working on all the houses right now, and this is one of them. But, uh, yeah, so here I'm just adding in some roofs and stuff. I have to add, like, a lot of expanded bits, so, like, a normal salt box house or, like, a traditional salt box house wouldn't have, like, these dormers uh, on the back like that or, like, those additions on the back or, like, the whole garage or any of the side parts, you know, that, that stuff I did. Um because I just wanted it to uh, be bigger than just a tiny little house. Um, this lot is like right by the school, um, so you can see the school literally in the background, and it's kind of like next to uh, some of the other houses that I built, so uh, to the right of this house is Oxford Place, um, and on the other side of the street is Huntington House, and um, also Sunrise Starter, so it's kind of like in that area, um, so up by the school, so yeah, um, anyway. Um, I actually do change the width of the house. I was going to originally plan to have like a three wide front door, but then I decided not to because it just, none of them were very good. So, or I was going to do like a single wide front door or a three wide front door, but I didn't like any of the options. So I was like, okay, let me resize it here so I can fit a two uh, wide, a two block wide front door. So that's what I am ended up doing. But uh, yeah, so the house, even though it has a lot of rooms and is fairly large, like there's a lot of different rooms. Um, it's not a huge house, so as you can probably tell from the outside, it doesn't look like a huge house. Um, you know, it just took me a while to make it, as this is a 40-minute video, uh, mainly just because there's so many rooms to do, even though the rooms themselves aren't that big. So that's kind of the kind of the thing about this house here, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting house, and it's, it's very traditional looking. And once we get to the color, which I'm, I'm sure you've already seen from the thumbnail, that's where things get a little bit more spicy as well. But yeah, anyway, you can see I just built a gazebo right there because I kind of wanted to fill in that front yard space. I felt like it just looked a little empty because the house is set back a little bit because of the garage. So I thought, why not put a little gazebo there? That'll be nice. Um, anyway, here I'm just cleaning up the second floor area. Um, the, yeah, so the garage is pretty big. Um, I, of course, put a car in there. Um, it, I guess if you wanted to make the kitchen bigger and the garage smaller, that would make sense. As I realized after I built the house, I made the kitchen kind of small and the garage kind of big. So the kitchen ends up being that little room there behind the garage. It's only three blocks wide, so it's a galley kitchen. Um, so yeah, it's kind of on the, on the tight side, but you know, you can mess around with it if you download the house. I, I think it kind of works. I think it kind of, it, you know, gives the house some character. Um, but yeah, as you can see, a lot of small rooms, um, a lot of rooms and a lot of small rooms. Um, I made this house to be like an old house, so it's kind of, you know, like the bathrooms and kitchens are kind of slightly dated on purpose. Um, the rooms are small, uh, kind of on purpose, and you know, the house is very segmented. Um, no open floor plan in this one. Uh, you know, I kind of wanted it to have like a very cozy kind of old feel to it. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the master bedroom here. I had to expand the house a little bit to fit the bed in. So we can see I just kind of bumped out the wall there so I can have a fireplace and a bed because I wanted that. Uh, and then the floor plan is a little funky down here. So you can see I have this hallway that kind of angles there for like a little um, mudroom area at the back. Uh, the living room is on the left and then the study 
is on the right when you're facing the front of the house. Uh, the dining room is at the back and the kitchen is behind the garage. Um, there's one bedroom on the first floor and then four on the second floor. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly spacious, um, I guess by the number of rooms. Um, but yeah, anyway, up here I'm putting in some doors. I do adjust the floor plan a little bit so I can make that like center bedroom bigger because there's a lot of wasted space there in the hallway. Um, yeah, but yeah, putting in doors and windows, or actually I already did the windows, but putting in doors. Um, well, actually I actually didn't do all the windows yet, but anyway, uh, here I am. Oh, I was going to add a little roof there, but decided not to. Um, I also fixed the roof that's kind of like touching that window on the left side there. Um, I don't think I did that off camera, but I do fix it. Yeah, it looks a little bit questionable. Um, this house ends up having three fireplaces. So there's one in the living room, one in the study, and then one in the master bedroom. And here I'm putting in a little window there over the bed in the master bedroom. I had to add another dormer in the back because otherwise there was no windows for that bedroom. So yeah, that's why there's like so many dormers in the back. So let's get some light in the house. But um, yeah, anyway, here I am just getting in some more windows here. There's also a door there. Uh, this back door and yeah also fixing the chimneys here uh, just a little bit neater and getting some tops on them and uh, also changing out the window there as well but now we're going to get on to the color so when i was google searching um, salt box houses um, there was a fair amount that were bright red and i'm not sure what the significance of them being red is but it seems to be like not maybe not the most common thing but it seems to be something that people do is have red salt box houses so i thought that's cool let's go all in on the red so i was going to do like the shingles uh like the wood shingles painted red but then i was like well, actually most of these pictures they're not like painting the wood shingles or painting the side like siding so i changed it to, to wood siding um but I kept it red for sure um, because it, I don't know, it's just cool. I've never really just made a red house. Like I made the barn um, not that long ago. That was a red house, but it's a barn, you know, it's like you expect, you expect that to be red. So I thought this was something a little bit different um, and I kind of went all out. So not just the siding, but also the window trim is all red as well. Um, and like the railings and stuff, like everything's red, which you'll see. Um, maybe you might think it's too much, but I think it kind of works well. It, it looks good in my opinion. Anyway, here I'm just going around and making the whole house red. Um, definitely very vibrant. Um, I don't know, it's something different though. So just doing that, um, getting all that trim in. Usually I use a siding from Ambitions, but in this one I just went for the base game siding because, I don't know, I just felt like it worked fine in this instance because I didn't really want the, because um, like with this siding you can't make the corner pieces a different color. Um, I don't, or maybe you can, I don't know. For some reason, I thought you couldn't. I don't think you can. Um, and the Ambitions one, you can. So that was the reason why I uh, use the Ambitions one um, usually because I like to have like the white trim. But in this one, I was like, I'm going all red. So I might as well just go all red. Um, but yeah, you can see like all the windows have red trim. Uh, the garage door has red trim. The front door will also have red trim as well. Um, so I like red and white is kind of the theme on the outside. But yeah, it just looks really, I don't know. It just looks really good. I, I like it. So maybe you might not, but... I do. And I also went for more red siding around the garage here. I used vertical siding because, of course, with the constrained floor elevation there, it would look kind of wacky using the horizontal siding. So you want to use vertical siding on those areas. But also getting in some stone here uh, just for the foundation. This house is only built on a, like a one step up foundation. It's fairly uh, low um, just because, you know, why not? So the, the lot is still like slightly um, kind of sloped very little bit you can probably see in some areas like there's like one step up on the front and only and two steps uh, on the back so the lot does like shift a little bit in height but not not much um but yeah i also of course i fenced in the backyard as well because of the school being right there i mean it's still like not that much privacy but uh, you know, a little bit more. I also continue the fence along like by the gazebo because it's like a pathway that's like right against this lot. You can kind of see there. So I kind of wanted to add a little bit more privacy as well by doing that. But um, this area here is actually starting to get kind of filled in. So like this is like the fifth house I'm building um, in this area, uh, kind of by the school. So, you know, it's starting to, it's starting to get there a little bit. 
uh, starting to fill in these lots up here. Um, and yeah, I, I just like it. I think this house kind of works well in this uh, area. It's definitely the most expensive house by far in this neighborhood. Um, it ends up being really expensive. It's like 160,000 simoleons. Uh, whereas like the house across the street, like Huntington house was like seven or 90,000. Of course I did a starter home that was like, um, you know, less than 16,500. And I did another like mid range starter home. That's kind of like 18,500, something like that. And then the house next door is only like, I don't know, it might be like a hundred something, like a hundred, maybe it's like seven, it's between like 70 and a hundred thousand. So anyway, the point is the most expensive house, but it is bigger than the other one. So I guess, you know, it makes sense. Um, it, yeah, even it's just, it's really interesting to me how the house does not look that big from outside, but from the inside, it's actually like so many more rooms. It doesn't look like a five bedroom house. I think a lot of that is because like that fifth bedroom, it's on the first floor um, on the right side. And then the sunroom I built on the left side, it kind of extend out of the house, just only, but they're only like one floor high. And then like a lot of the trees and stuff kind of hide that from the front. So you don't really see how big the house is like from the front exactly until you like look for, at it from above. And then you can kind of see there's like some extra rooms there. So I think that's maybe why it's a little bit deceiving. Um, but, and also the rooms are just small too. <laughs> just like small rooms, but a lot of them. So, you know. Uh, of course, if you download the house, you can modernize it, and if you want, you can knock out a lot of walls, especially on the first floor, open it up a little bit, um, but then it wouldn't be kind of as traditional, because these houses, when they were built, were definitely not open plan, so that's why I thought, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of make it a little bit more classic. Um, I did put a wall around the front, but then I decided to remove it later, because I felt like it didn't really fit with the neighborhood, because none of the houses here really had, none of the houses in this neighborhood are very fancy, so they don't have, like, trimmed hedges and, like, walls in the front, so I felt like it was kind of the wrong vibe for, like, just the houses around it, so I, I like, while it was nice, I did remove it, uh, so, you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, I think it, it looks better in the end, a little bit more humble than having like your trimmed hedge and like brick walls on the other side of your walkway and stuff. So yeah, I feel like that wasn't really necessary. But um, anyway, oh, putting some stuff in the kitchen. I, I did like a first pass through the house and I put in uh, like the kitchen, some furniture, and then I come back later and start recoloring things and doing all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I don't kind of do it all at once. You know, I kind of do it in a couple of waves, if you will. Uh, there's a little built-in bookshelf there I made out of that extra space that I just happened to have. Um, and just recoloring some stuff here. Uh, and yeah, let's see if we're going to start on the inside or not. Um, looking for a light. Yeah, there's a light. That's nice. So some lights in the hallway there. And uh, some lights in some of the rooms, uh, some of the formal rooms. Uh, of course, this is the dining room here. I also found these chairs that I've never used before, nor never remember seeing. Uh, they must be from some store set. I would reckon Dragon Valley just based on the style of them. And also because I bought Dragon Valley like last year or two years ago, and I never really used it. So um, since I've never seen those, that's probably where they're from. Um, so yeah, that I put them in because it's something different. I've never used that object before. I've never even seen it before. So there you go. Uh, this is the living room here. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting a basic layout. It's a pretty small room again. Like as, as I've said, um, the rooms aren't huge. Um, but, you know, they're cozy, so that's nice. Anyway, here I'm rearranging this second floor a little bit. Um, I added this kind of diagonal wall so I could kind of squeeze those two doors in. I still don't know if those two doors work. Um, one's for a bedroom, one's for a bathroom. They might not. I don't play test these houses because, uh, you know, it, I, I usually just don't think about it until later. So, you know, if it doesn't work, you can probably finagle that little area but yeah I did put the angle there just so the doors weren't like so on top of each other but they are still kind of sharing like a space there so who knows if that works I thought it looked cool so I did it um anyway I yeah so I expanded that front bedroom there so it's like much bigger and um basically I'll give you the breakdown of the bedrooms um there's two guest bedrooms uh, a master bedroom a toddler's room, which is the first one I've done in like two years, no, a year and a half at least, um, and the master bedroom, and a kid's room. So yeah, those are the five bedrooms. Um, you could probably easily reconfigure them if you want to, um, but that's what I went for anyway. So, you know, pretty good family house. Uh, so this is the guest bedroom downstairs. So I'm just uh, figuring out the layout here. I think I make it a little bigger, or did I already do that? I already made it bigger. So yeah, I do expand it a little bit so I can fit the bed in better. I also change out the front window later too, so it's a bit bigger and nicer. Anyway, that's the study right there with the fireplace by the front. And then I actually change up this uh, 
area here. So I make this bathroom kind of like a Jack and Jill bathroom, but not really because it's like between the front hallway and this bedroom. Actually, I'm about to do that right now. So that way, um, it's kind of like the, an ensuite for the bedroom, for the guest bedroom, but then also this the hall bathroom on the first floor as well. So it's like dual purpose. This is the upstairs bathroom right here. Who knows if that toilet works with the door being there, but yeah, it looks fine. Um, and then the master bathroom is there off the master bedroom. Uh, anyway, down here, I'm getting in the wood flooring. So I'm going for parquet because I, I thought that was fitting for this kind of house and just putting that throughout. Um, also getting in, oh, accidentally went into edit town there. Also getting in a railing uh, by the stairs there, which is always good to have. Uh, you may notice that with the floor plan, I put in, um, oh, actually right there is where I removed the uh, hedge. Anyway, you may have noticed with the floor plan, I put a lot of closets in there, just like corners of a room. I just like put an angled wall in the corner and a door on it. Um, I did that once before, like a, little, a, a while ago, like in 2017, um, which is crazy how long ago that is now. Um, but yeah, I used to do that, um, or I did that once, uh, where I couldn't have, or I could, didn't have room to put like full size closets in there, like the two by one size, um, cause they would take up too much space in these bedrooms in this house cause they're really small bedrooms. So I decided instead just to do that little corner and then it looks like there's a closet there even though it's just like a little tiny useless space. You know, you can use your imagination and pretend there's shelves in there um, and that's like a little closet with shelves so you can like put folded clothes in it or something. I just feel like I need to have closets in houses because it just feels weird not to have any closets in any bedrooms because real houses tend to have closets. So I just do that just so I can be like, hey, there's a closet there. Anyway, uh, I recolored the fence there so it's white now. Uh, and also just putting in some landscaping. I actually do all the landscaping now uh, before I go into the house, which is unusual. Usually I do landscaping last, but here we are. Sometimes I like to mix it up. So yeah, just doing the same kind of bushes and flowers and stuff that I've been using in all the houses in the world. So again, it all kind of matches. Uh, you know, it usually you'd have this similar kind of plants growing in you know a particular region, especially on an island. So that's what I'm doing here. Anyway, uh, just adding some, yeah, adding in the dirt terrain paint. Uh, the house like a little bit fancier because it has like that front walkway that kind of goes around the bush there, which I feel like is a little bit fancier. So it has that. Also has the gazebo too. I guess that's kind of fancy as well. Um, I also had a little walkway uh, from the gazebo to that front pathway as well. So I'm going to do that right here. And yeah, so just doing some of the terrain paint stuff here. And I think that's probably pretty much it. Recoloring the mailbox. For some reason, I decided to put the mailbox over by the garage. I just felt like it, it worked there better. So I did it. Um, the front hallway has like this very fancy wood paneling um, that is... It's nice, you know? It, again, gives the house some character. That's what I was going for. It makes an older house. It has the character. It has, like, the wood-paneled entry. And, like, in the fancier rooms of the house, so, like, the living room, the front hall, the dining room, and the study all have, like, wooden trim on the doors and archways. But then in the rest of the house, they're all painted white. So that was kind of, like, another little hier hierarchical, hierarchical, <laughs> I think that's how you say that hierarchical cue and on like what the rooms uh, are about in the house so you know some rooms are fancier and they have like the wood trim and some just are the white trim so that was kind of what I was going with there um and like you know in some cases like between like the mud room and the living room like one side of the archway is wood and the other side is white so that's intentional um because I kind of wanted it to be fancy on the living room side and then not as fancy on the mud room side that's kind of the idea there um but anyway here I'm um, just getting some stairs in for the garage so you can step down into the garage there. The garage is a funky shape because of the chimney that cuts into it uh, from the living room there, but it's fine. Um, you know, we're good. Uh, I had to re-level re the ground under the garage though because it was a little bit weird. It was like between one step and, it was like, and two steps. It was like one and a half steps, so I couldn't put stairs in well, so I leveled it down better. Also, the laundry is in the garage because I didn't have space for a separate laundry room. So yeah, a little bit not so classy there, but laundry in the garage. Um, and the garage is quite big. Again, you could probably shrink the garage and expand the kitchen. I didn't because I didn't think of it until after I built the house and I was like, I like it the way it is, so I'll leave it. But anyway, uh, there's the upstairs hallway uh, with the wallpaper and the wood. Um, I think we tackle the living room first once we actually get down to doing rooms, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, here just recoloring these sconces. So just getting those in, uh, recoloring them and putting them around, uh, some in there. 
as well. That's a little mudroom area, which is kind of pointless, but it's there. Um, and yeah, so I think we're going to do a living room now. Um, yeah, so the living room, again, it's kind of a cozier room. I kind of wanted these rooms to feel like cozy and, and, and intimate and compact. Um, and have kind of like fancier materials, especially these front rooms. So you have a kind of marble on the fireplace there. And then I'm getting in the wood paneling as well. So just doing that. I don't remember what wall color I go with. We'll see. I think it's like a blue or something. Or maybe, uh, no, yeah, kind of. Mm, it's like a gray. Um, and the, the furniture is kind of a blue. That was kind of like a light turquoise, something or other like that. Um, but yeah, so we have uh, like a love seat, a couch, and a chair there, an armchair, and of course a nice TV there over the fireplace because there's no like family room or our other like bonus room. This is like the only living room, so I put the fireplace in here or the TV in here. Um, but yeah, also getting in a uh, nice painting to go over the couch there, and of course if this house is like open floor plan, I could, like the the whole wall between this room and the hallway and like the mud room over there is like all unnecessary, but I I wanted it as intentionally there uh, because it's it kind of dictates the way the house feels and kind of like the theme of it, so I wanted it there. Um, but yeah, I like it. Even though the room's kind of small, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a nice cozy vibe. Uh, also getting in a rug here, going in for something a little different with the texture on it, or the texture, I guess the, the pattern on it. Kind of got this vine, uh, vine motif there. Also putting in a little bookshelf over there and uh, some plants in the corner probably, uh, also a lamp as well. Um, I also get in like this radio um, thing from like, I think it's like from Roaring Heights or something or I don't know, or fast lane stuff. I don't know, it's like one of those things. And it's like, um, it's like 1920s-esque uh, radio, which I'm going to put in the corner, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Like a nice big piece. There it is, uh, kind of on the angled wall there, which is interesting. But yeah. And so anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the living room. We get some curtains here over the front bay window. And um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for the living room. Uh, we move on now to the dining room, which is in the back of the house. It has this nice bay window though, which is cool. It adds some some nice natural light. Um, and uh, I went for like this um, kind of blue striped wallpaper. So it's like a light blue wallpaper with some nice uh, stripes on it. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of recoloring the uh, archway and stuff for this uh, room or also the door too. Just like recoloring those things, um, you know because it's a, supposed to be a fancier room. Um, also back in the hallway here for, for a moment, just to kind of add in some details. So I'm just getting in uh, like a little side table there and then also a rug on the floor as well. It was kind of a runner. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much um, the front hall, I think. I don't think I'd do too much more with that. And then here in the dining room, uh, getting a rug in here as well, of course, and also recoloring the table and chairs. I went like a white wood for this room, which I haven't done in a little while. Um, and yeah, also recoloring the rug there. Also kind of blue theme going on with that as well. So yeah, just doing that. And uh, getting a candle on the table. And um, also a little um, kind of china cabinet hutch thing. And oh, yellow horse. Yes, the yellow horse makes an appearance in this house. Um, I end up putting it on one of these shelves here. So I decided to put some shelves on the wall there because I was like, why not? Nice little decorative feature for the wall there. And yeah, I put the yellow horse, little piggy sculpture thing. And I think that's it. Or no, I do put a third item there. I find one later. Um, also, I put a little hutch there in the hallway as well, just for a little added bit of detail. And uh, put in some detail in the kitchen there as well. And I Find, as I'm finding objects, just placing them in some rooms. I put like a globe in the study. Also going to get some plants in here as well. And a nice mirror there. Um, and what else? Let's see another plant as well. And uh, of course some curtains, which are always good to have. So getting in some curtains there. Um, nice like a light uh, color there. Um, and then with the mud room, I spent so long trying to find this 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 specific object that I was like sure existed. And um, yeah, I spent forever looking for it. And then I also turned off, like I stopped filming and searched more and then realized foolishly that it's a Sims 4 object and not a Sims 3 object. I was looking for like this pair of shoes. It's like the, it's not like the shoe rack that came with generations. It's like two shoes, like just one pair of shoes, like boots or something. I was kind of like laying on a floor or like they can lay anywhere, I guess, but you know, you put them on the floor, but I like was looking for that. I was like, this would be perfect for the mudroom. Just put them on the mat there. And I was like, after like searching forever, like going through every single pack, I was like, 
that object must be in The Sims 4 and not The Sims 3. I was like thinking it was a Sims 3 object, but it, it was not. It was It's a Sims 4 object. So a little foolish there. I was a little foolish there, but it's fine. Anyway, in the kitchen, the kitchen intentionally dated. Um, so I went for like the older cabinets um, and I went with tile on the counters, but I did put in new appliances. So it's like, oh, the people who lived here updated the appliances at some point, but not necessarily the rest of the kitchen. Also, I've been like really liking these yellow floors for some reason. I, I've used them a couple times, I think, uh, already in other houses. So I put them here as well. Um, I have these yellow like brick uh, or stone floors. Um, so I put them in the kitchen. And again, the kitchen is small. It's a galley kitchen. Um, but again, it's cozy. You know, it, it has character, at least. Um, that's the, that's what I'm going to say. Um, and then there's also the sunroom that's right off the kitchen as well, which it doubles as like a breakfast room as well. So I put in like a little breakfast table there so you don't have to eat in the formal dining room, uh, you know, exclusively, especially since there isn't like a, a counter to eat at in the kitchen because it's so small. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's the kitchen. This is the sunroom, um, which has like nice large windows to look out over the road. That's like right there. But beyond the road is the ocean. So that's nice. Um, or a view of the ocean anyway. So anyway, yeah, in this room here, I'm putting in the uh, little table there. So some table and chairs here so your Sims can eat in this room as well. There's also that nice like built-in bookshelf I put in a while back. And I also put in a uh, lounge chair there so your Sims can kick back and soak up the sun in the sunroom. So that's nice. Also the ceiling fans in here too to keep it cool. And, um, yeah, nice little uh, side table there. And I also, because it's a sunroom, I also thought I should put in a lot of plants too, because I feel like that's kind of fitting. So I put in a lot of plants as well. So, um, a nice variety here. So kind of like a more tropical plant there, some ivy there in the corner and just some various things here. Kind of like adds a lot of color to the room. It makes it feel, um, you know, very nice and lush and stuff. Um, so just doing that and also a hanging plant there over the table and then some curtains as well. So yeah, that's the uh, sunroom. And I think that's most of, actually it's not most of the first floor. We still have to do the study and the bathroom and the bedroom. I was getting a little ahead of myself there, but yeah, this is the study here, which is off the front hallway and has a fireplace in it. And again, it's a small room, but it's just, it's, what, it's just all you need, you know? You don't need anything more than this. Um, also using this kind of interesting uh, wallpaper texture, um, this kind of paneling thing with wallpaper in the middle, which I thought was kind of cool. And I went for this interesting pattern here of kind of like flowers. Um, and then I got a bookshelf in as well along the back wall there. And yeah, just it's just a nice little room. It has a fireplace. I think I've said that too many times. There's also a nice desk there as well. Of course, the computer on it because it's a study. So it's good to have that. Uh, a nice painting there as well. And also like one of those globes, which is cool. There's the computer and uh, there's the lamp. I was going to say the chair, but there's the lamp first. The chair comes second, of course. There's the chair. Um, and I also put in a couple armchairs in here as well, just so you can sit by the fire and kind of, you know, uh, you know, soak up the warmth if you want to. Also a nice little uh, side table between the chairs. Also a trophy uh, shelf there above, which I haven't used that object in the longest time. I can't remember the last time I used it but it's in this house, so there you go. And uh, recoloring a little rug there, but yep, that's the uh, study. So I think next we're gonna move on to the bedroom and bathroom. So this is the bathroom that's kind of like a Jack and Jill between the bedroom and the hallway. So it kind of serves a dual purpose there. Um, and here I'm just kind of recoloring some stuff. I really actually like the floor. It's from Generations, I believe. I also use a different Generations floor upstairs as well. I like the tile floors that came with that pack. They're actually kind of cool. Um, but this bathroom, again, intentionally, the bathrooms are a little dated. I've been doing this a lot with my houses, um, so I'm sure you've noticed, like, the townhouses were that way. Um, the Actually, like, all my houses recently have been that way because I've been building houses that are kind of older um, and not necessarily, like, renovated. So that's kind of the vibe I've been going for. So... You know, I'm not going to make all the houses this way. It's just these ones are this way. But yeah, so this one, a uh, little bit more of a dated bathroom. But I like the colors, though. It's kind of nice. Um, it, it's nice in its own way. So anyway, in this bedroom here, uh, going for like this uh, patterned wallpaper. And uh, it's a pretty big room, actually. It's a nice size. It has like a nice big window in the front, which I haven't put in yet, but I will. Also, I put in Tiffany lamps as well, kind of like the nice um, uh, stained glass lamps. So you'll see that in a moment. And so uh, just recoloring some stuff here, like the bedspread and the side tables and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, those are the lamps right there. So yeah, just some nice uh, colorful lamps. And there's the big front window I put in, which you can't really see from the street too much because of the trees and bushes. So it's still a little bit more private, but it adds like a nice, nice bit of flair to the room, you know, a little bit of drama. 
Um, so there's that. And also a nice chair in the corner and a mirror in the other corner. Also got some dressers, a lot, a lot of windows in this room, which is nice. And uh, getting a bit of a painting there over the bed. Also, of course, some curtains as well, which are always good to have. So just using these ones from, I think, uh, Master Suite stuff or whatever that pack was. I really like them because they're like independent, separate curtains. So they're a little bit more flexible. Um, but yeah, so just doing all that kind of stuff and getting in a rug here as well, of course. So, yep, just uh, figuring out the colors for that. So I kind of mirrored the bedspread uh, for the colors on the rug. So yeah, just going and uh, doing that. I went through a lot of different options there, but that's what I settled on. So also just doing the closet here. So this bedroom is this bedroom and the master bedroom are the only ones that have like full-size closets because uh, the other rooms are kind of small. So, but yeah, anyway, here in the hallway upstairs, I put a little side table and a rug. Also another phone there, and I also put in a clock there in the sunroom, because I guess why not? And a little clock on that table there as well in the hallway. So anyway, here I'm going to begin on the second floor bedrooms. So this is the kids' room. I went a little bit more colorful than usual for this one. Um, so it's, it's a little bit less generic, I guess, which is kind of fun. So it's a blue and green color scheme with kind of like this orangey wood. Um, you can see the bedspread's already more funky than usual. Uh, I'm also getting in uh, some sort of lamp here, so just doing that. But like, once we get the floors and wallpaper in, it'll start to come together a little bit more. I think the carpet itself is kind of boring, but the wallpaper is more fun. Uh, so there's the carpet, uh, getting that in, also getting in the wallpaper here. So I think I went for some sort of vine uh, aesthetic uh, here for the walls. Uh, kind of something, something similar to what was on the rug in the living room, but different colors. So yeah, going for like blue and green, and I'm also going to get in like this nice kind of um, uh, what do you call it, vanity thingy, and also a bookshelf there, also got a desk in that little nook there, which is nice, uh, so just putting that in, also a shelf there over the desk as well, with a laptop and a little chair, and also putting in some toys and stuff as well, we'll get to that, also this kind of, um, uh, board there over the bed, uh, a cork board, that's what it's called, a cork board there over the bed, and a little toy there, a little green toy, uh, some stuff on the desk, and also this like a little backpack and like coat hanger as well. I kind of wish I could have recolored those stars. I didn't really want the, the, them to be like yellow and pink, like blue and green would have been more on theme, but you know, it's fine. Also, I got some bean bag chairs in here, and I kind of give them like they're each uh, kind of give them each a color, a little lamp there in between, and a nice little flower rug. So that's nice. And also getting in a curtain here as well. So kind of coloring that to match the room. And um, I I think that's mostly it. I think I put in a few more things. There's like a little stool there, which is not necessary for that because it's just a dresser object, but I want to have a stool there and some stuff on the desk here. So also some books piled up underneath. And yeah, so that's that bedroom. Uh, we're gonna move on now to the upstairs bathroom here. So this is the kind of the upstairs guest bathroom. So this one has like a more of a yellow color scheme. Um, and it has that floor I really like I used in the last build as well. Uh, it's, it's kind of a funky pattern, you know, it's cool. It's a little bit different, but yeah, it's yellow, as you can see, and the uh, toilet and shower also end up being yellow as well, so that also kind of adds a bit of color. It's kind of like a mustard yellow, uh, actually, and then here, I'm going to put some tile on the walls as well, so just getting that in. Uh, it's kind of like this nice lighter uh, tile, and then uh, some sort of wallpaper on the top, or some sort of paint, I guess, on the top, but yeah, also putting in the details, of course, so putting in toilet paper and towels, and I'll put in some mats on the floor, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Also some blinds on the window there because that is a shower. Um, and yeah, there's the floor mats and stuff, but that's pretty much it for that bathroom. So pretty simple there. And also a little bit of an art there over the toilet. Anyway, next we're gonna move on to the guest bedroom here. So this is the front guest bedroom. Uh, nice, lar slightly larger room than the other, um, well, than the kids' rooms. Um, it actually would be possible too for like the left side of this room to kind of be made into like a three by two bathroom as well if you want to do that. If you want to have like an ensuite bathroom or another hall bathroom, I thought about doing it, but then I was like, yeah, I don't think it's necessary. So I just kept this room a little bit bigger, which I thought was nice. But yeah, anyway, you can see here it's kind of going for a green color scheme with this room. Um, uh, making everything kind of a nice, nice kind of sophisticated dark green. Um, but yeah, putting in uh, just some stuff in here. There's a little corner closet there as well, which the other some of the other bedrooms have. And uh, yeah, it's looking around for some artwork and stuff. Getting some curtains there over the bed, uh, or on the window more accurately. And a nice rug there as well. And probably a few things on top of the dresser here just to add a little bit of detail. And um, an alarm clock there, also a bit of art there. 
but otherwise I think that's pretty much it for that bedroom. Over here I'm doing a toddler's room or a baby's room. Um, so that's different. I haven't done that in a long time. I think the last house I did this in was um, the Let's Build house that I did. I finished like in mid-2018, so a while ago. It was the last time I did a toddler baby's room. So yeah, I'm doing it here. I have like this nice cloud wallpaper, which I thought was kind of nice, and also a rocking chair, which I thought would be important to have, um, you know, if a parent wants to, I don't know, read something or just sit there, you know. Um, and also a lamp there as well. Also getting a curtain there on the window. Also have some random toys scattered on the floor as well. And also getting a little bit of art over here by the door. And I find these like nice little bunny rugs that I put on the floor. So there's like one that's like facing upright. Then I put one that's like facing downward. So you can see um, it's like two different versions of it there. So I thought that was kind of fun. So I put that in and yeah, so that's the toddler's room or, or baby's room. Anyway, here we're moving on to the master bedroom where I went for gold and red. So a very regal color scheme here. Uh, so yeah, this bedroom uh, maybe a little gaudy, but definitely unique. So I thought, why not? So yeah, we have a nice fireplace in this room. Uh, nice wardrobe here as well going in for that like very rich colors uh, you know we have like the gold and red wallpaper the gold or not the gold the uh, red bedspread um, and kind of like the nice stone topped side tables there also going in for some red side table lamps you know very very regal kind of color scheme in here also getting in uh, some chairs as well which I thought was nice so they kind of like the red accent on the pillows there and uh, also a rug of course so getting in that not that rug right there Ooh no no, no, no. Um, a different one, that one there. Much better. Um, and then of course, I'm going to put in some curtains and stuff as well. So yeah, it's doing that, getting in the curtains here, um, which kind of are like a nice light color. So it kind of brightens up the room a little bit. And then I also put a dresser over there by the door and I put a mirror over it and then some stuff on it as well. But yeah, so that's pretty much um, the master bedroom. Um, there's also like a nice uh, closet on this bedroom as well, a full-size closet, and also this bathroom here. So again, a little bit more dated. It's actually a pink bathroom, but what I did here, which is kind of interesting, is I used the ceiling tiles. So there's like the ceiling tile section, um, and I put the ceiling tiles here. Like This is kind of like supposed to go like around a light on the ceiling, but instead I put it on the floor and kind of used it as like this fancy inlay on the tile floor. So I thought, you know, that's cool. So why not do that? So I put that in there and here I'm just kind of recoloring stuff in here. I'm going for some pink for the toilet and shower. So yeah, and also the pink tiles as well. So that's kind of a look. Um, and also here's the closet. So uh, getting in uh, some lights there and also of course I'll put some clothes in there as well in a moment, but also just uh, putting in uh, some towels and some toilet paper, all that kind of good stuff in the uh, master bathroom. Also going for the gold and red towels. So it's a gold towel there by the sink. And then I put in gold and red towels here um, for the shower. So, you know, there you go. Anyway, uh, also some mats on the floor as well. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for that as well. So, um, oh yeah, there's the clothes for the closet, but we're actually getting near the end here. I'm gonna do some final touches, I believe, like the garage, uh, some more outdoor things probably, uh, some stuff like that. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Also, you can check out um, some playlists on my channel. I have a playlist where I show all my Sims 3 house design videos. There's the ones, uh, well, there's another one that's specifically for ones for Plymouth Isle. Also, you can check out the playlist for where I create the world in Plymouth Isle or create the world Plymouth Isle, not creating the world in Plymouth Isle, but you know what I mean. <laughs> You can check out that playlist on my channel as well if you have not seen it already. Um, and of course, there's a download link in the description below. So uh, this is built on lot 63. Uh, so you can download this and place it in Plymouth Isle if you want to, or in any world for that matter. Um, but yeah, so you know, if you have any feedback, let me know in the comments. Um, if you like the video, please make sure to give it a like. And I hope you stick around for the screenshots as well, because those are coming up very soon. I also took some screenshots in the snow, because I thought that'd be kind of fun. And you know, it's January, it's winter time. I feel like it's kind of fitting, so why not? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yes, yeah, so just doing some, some final touches here, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.